Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.7 and DECA Ironwork Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 9, C701 Guided Missile. The C701, eh, or actually the C701T, as represented here on the JF17, is the Chinese equivalent to the Maverick missile in US and other foreign service. Uh, you can use it in much the same way. Uh, in Chinese service, it's actually designated as a short-range anti-shipping missile, um, but uh, in actual fact, you can employ it against all kinds of targets. It works in exactly the same way as the Maverick missile. The only version that's available in the JF-17 is the C-701T. That's the version with the infrared seeker, uh, and it's, it's a completely automated infrared uh, fire and forget air to ground missile, which can also be used against ships. Um, although it's uh, just as just as well used against moving ground targets, tanks, things like that. It has an approximate uh, rate maximum range of ten nautical miles. So again, pretty much the same as the Maverick. You can only carry it on the two outer pylons here uh, singly. Uh, it's not possible to carry it on the inner pylons or on the wingtips. So you can only carry two of them in a sortie, but apart from that, uh, it's a pretty useful missile. There's not really any setup uh, of the missile. It, 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 when you first power the missile on, it takes three minutes to go through its alignment, and then when you first turn on the camera, it takes approximately 30 seconds to run its built-in test. So I, I guess pretty similar to the infrared versions of the, uh, the Maverick and other aircraft, you do need to select them uh, before you reach the target area. What I'll do now is I'll start the aircraft up, take off, and you can rejoin me en route to the range where I will demonstrate the two different ways that you can employ it. You can have it slaved to your current sensor point of interest, or you can utilize it in snowplow mode for target of opportunity attacks. I'll see you there. Okay, you rejoin me in the cockpit en route towards waypoint one, which is co-located with the bomb circle that we're going to attack. So let's get the aircraft set up in order to employ the C-701 missile. First thing that we're going to want to do is put the aircraft into air-to-ground master mode. You do this by pushing your T1 master mode switch aft, just like that, and the aircraft is now configured for air-to-ground mode. Uh, let's look down to the left here. We're going to put master arm to on. Weapons are now armed. And let's focus down on the left multifunction display, and we can see how to set up the missile. Now you'll see that the aircraft has already automatically selected the missile, because it's the only air-to-ground munition that we have today. It's labelled as the 7TV here in the SMS system. That's because in Chinese service, the missile is designated YJ-7. So uh, don't get confused by that. The export version is the C-701 Tango. Um, so, in any case, you've got mode automatic, that's the only mode this missile can be used in. You have the weapon here, if we press, we can see that we can select the gun or the 7TV. We're going to leave the 7TV selected. We're going to power the missile on, because it's currently turned off, and it'll go through a quick power-up cycle. Now, uh, this is a hot start. Uh, if you'd cold-started the aircraft, the missile would take three minutes to go through alignment, but uh, I've already done that. And then you also have the option to fire the missiles singly. Uh, or to fire both at the same time. Uh, and you can ch change the, the interval that you want there as well. I'm leaving it on single. Uh, and again, you've got your uh, brake altitude, uh, as we saw in the previous video on the laser-guided bombs. We're not going to set that today because we're going to be in a kind of level profile. So as I mentioned uh, in the first part of the video, it is possible to fire these slaved or snowplowed. In snowplow mode, you're just using the sensor built into the missile. It will it will basically be viewing fixed forwards. Uh, you fly to position the seeker over the target, and then you can lock or slew. Uh, and enslaved mode is where it will point directly at whatever your current sensor point of interest is. We're going to use the slaved mode first, because that's uh, generally going to be the easiest way to employ the missile. So let's take a little look at the center multifunction display here. Uh, you could use the radar. Uh, I'm not going to do that today, though, because the uh, the bomb circle doesn't show up on the radar very well. So um, we're actually going to switch to pod and use the WMD-7. We'll quickly turn it on, uncage it, 
slave it to the current uh, waypoint and we're going to push a uh, sensor control switch to the left to switch us into infrared and then we're going to push forwards to uh, FOV in and then I'm going to use the zoom control to zoom all the way down just make sure that we're looking at the right thing there we go I, I pushed sensor control switch to the right there just to switch the polarity and now we can see what we're looking at so I'm just going to put that uh, on the center of the bomb circle and I'm going to depress uh, the, the T5 the TDC we have a target the laser range finder has told us it's 10 miles away we're now ready to use the missile in slaved mode so uh, with that I'm going to go ahead and go to the right multifunction display I'm going to push the S1 or sensor select switch to the right to make this multifunction display my sensor of interest. We're going to go menu, pod, and TVIR on the left here. And this will give us the sensor of the missile itself. So these, you know, th this is the, uh, the missile control page. Uh, first thing we want to do is to turn the missile on. You'll see it goes through the built-in test that I described earlier. That takes approximately 30 seconds. Um, so we'll give it a little bit of time to run through that. You then can change the mode that the sensor is working in, SP for snowplow. If I was to push this once it's powered on, it will flip between snowplow and slaved, as I described. Field of view, wide or narrow. Lock mode, manual or automatic. In manual mode, you have to slew the missile over your target and then depress the TDC. In automatic mode, all you have to do is slew the missile and then release and it will automatically lock whatever is underneath. Um, so we're going to put it into automatic mode just now, especially in slaved mode, that's going to be the way to go. We can now see that the missile is displaying idle. That means it's passed its uh, uh, built-in test. We can press on again, and immediately we have video feed, and the missile is live. Let's go ahead and switch it from snowplow into slaved. It's now looking down, uh, and we can also press sensor, sensor control switch forward, to put it into the narrow field of view uh, and because it's an automatic it's going to immediately try to lock on to that target let's continue inbound i'm going to take the aircraft out of auto uh, sorry out of uh, active pause and you can see range counting down and we're going to wait until we get a lock there it is attempting a lock now actually let me pause just for a moment i'll quickly go over the symbology that we have here um, the seeker head of the missile will be displayed on the hud as a circle with crosshairs and a dot uh, the current sensor points of interest will be a diamond it's actually below the uh, bottom of the hud right now though as always at the bottom right we're going to get information about the target current range 8.6 miles closure rate uh, whether it's left or right of the center of the aircraft and time to overfly that point so let's continue. What we're looking for is uh, on the missile seeker page, we should get a red diamond once it's managed to actually lock the target. It seems to be having a hard time. There we go. Red and flashing. We can go ahead and press pickle. Missile is away. Let's follow this chappy and see what he does. That was a fairly close shot, so it shouldn't have too much trouble. Um, theoretically, the missile should be able to make a 10 nautical mile shot, uh, but as always, there we go. Excellent hit. Uh, as always, trying to get the seeker to lock is the, the difficult part. That, <laughs> that can cause you some trouble. Alrighty, so we've got one more of these missiles. Let's put it back into snowplow mode. Uh, let's, uh, for now, lose the targeting pod. Let's just turn this off. Actually, how do I turn it off? There we go, that's it caged. Cool, so I'm just gonna cage the pod right now so it doesn't act as a um, distraction. I'm going to let the aircraft get a little bit further away. You can see we've got this crosshair up here on the HUD. I'm going to uh, leave it on automatic just now, actually. Um, actually, no, let's demonstrate manual. So for manual, I'd have to depress the TDC. Uh, let's take the aircraft out of autopilot 
and I'm now going to see if I can prosecute this target manually. So, around we come. I'm going to follow the diamond on my HUD, because that's still the sensor point of interest. Lose a little bit of altitude, because that'll make this easier. There we go. That is the target area. I'm going to go sensor control switch forward to give me the narrow field of view. I'm going to slew down just because that's going to be easier for me to get my eyes on the target. Target should be approximately here. Depress. We have a lock. Depress pickle. We have missile away. Rifle, I guess you would call, if this was a NATO aircraft. And this time we're just going to fly inbound and see what it does. We should see the missile impact. There we go. Another excellent hit. So that was us just using the snowplow mode, uh, where we're using only the seeker that's built into the missile. Very good. And then you can see on the page here that we have a flashing red no dev for no device. Uh, so we have actually used all of those missiles. And on the stores management page, that's confirmed on the wing form and by the fact that this profile is now all crossed out. We've got no more of those missiles. So there you go. That is how you employ the C-701 missile in both snowplow and slaved modes. As I said before, this is an infrared guided fire and forget missile. Quite useful for points on the ground, vehicles, moving vehicles, and ships. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.